Howdy, me Flowbart here, and welcome. We actually have video. Hi, cool. Um, we started off on a couple of these before, but we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do it right. <clears throat> Getting started. I get a lot of people that um, come to my channel, come to my Discord channel, and um, I hear a lot of the same comments of, you know, I'm new to Unreal Engine, I'm new to game development, <clears throat> and I really want to create a so-and-so, or I want to do this, or I want to do that, or how do I do this, how do I do that. Um, I like helping people, and I'll try to help people as much as I possibly can to whatever knowledge that I have, or I'll try to get you directed towards where you can get that information. So I'm not going to say, no, I'm not going to help you with that, but... I really want people to slow down and I know you have great ambitions and you want to create this awesome project and awesome game and you want to do this really cool stuff but you don't know where to start or you think you know where to start and you just start hammering away and you're getting nowhere things aren't working things are breaking well really what I, I think the best option for everybody to do is go through a learning phase. I, when I'm trying to learn how to do something and figure out how to do something, I will create a new project. I will go in and if I don't know how to do it, I'm going to keep trying it on a, a practice project. Something that I know that I'm going to delete later. And I delete a lot of projects. Um, I will go in, create a, a, a temporary project that I can go in and try the the feature that I'm trying to accomplish. And I will keep going until I get it right, or, you know, I'll come back to it. I don't let it beat me, but if at first you don't succeed, give up, take a break, walk away a little bit, go do something else. All right, that being said going to assume that you've never done anything with Unreal Engine 4 or nothing successful on Unreal Engine 4, but this is just going to be a basic training series of getting you going in the right frame of mind with some of the basic items that will help you to learn the basics of Unreal Engine. You can't create the next Arc Survival Evolved or the next... Um, Conan Exiles or the next AAA title if you don't know how to do anything at all. And just because all you can do is, is blueprints, you can't do any programming, blueprints are an easy way to get started. Um, there are going to be things you're going to want to learn to do with coding, and you can mix um, C++ with blueprints. It integrates well. So with that, I'm here in the new project <clears throat> section. You're going to want to make sure that you're set up for desktop and console because I want you to follow along with this project. A maximum quality, no starter content, blank. But I want to do a third person or I want to do... Just bear with me. Blank. Project name. Well, first off, your folder. You want to make sure this is directed to your default location, which this is my default location, which is My Documents and Unreal Projects folder. And for the project name, I'm going to change this over to um, eh, whatever, Starter. And then I'm going to hit Create Project. Now, I am using the current version, which is 4.22.2 and I've had some issues with it. Things not working that usually work, um, random crashes, so it's not the most stable version compared to what I'm used to, um, but it is the current latest version and that's what I'm going to use. So your project comes up. The first thing I'm going to do is after it gets done discovering asset data is I'm going to click right here and what this is going to do is it's going to split this naturally so I have folders here and the content of the folders here. Now, I'm not going to try to be complicated on anything. This is just going to be plain and simple on everything. 
Um, this, these are going to be your content browsing areas where you're going to see your folders, your files, and you're going to want to be organized and neat in how you do things. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. 7P method. So think about what you're doing ahead of time and build your folder structure to fit that. Right now we have nothing in our content folder whatsoever. We have nothing. If I were to hit play, um, I have a mouse cursor, I can left click and drag to move around. I can WASD and I can fly around this little small plate. There's nothing to it. There's nothing here. We have a sky. We just don't have anything. So I'm going to hit the escape key, which is going to cancel the, the playing. We do have a player start. We have the floor. We have a sphere reflection capture. Um, we see our sky. We have our light source. And I'm just left clicking on these. And we have our atmospheric fog. These are in here by default. And you've got a sun up here. Yes, you can make it to where the sun moves. You see the clouds are actually moving right now on their own. That's all built in. You don't have to worry about doing any of that. You're all good to go right there with getting started with this. Now, since we want to move our character around and actually have a character, what we're going to start off with is Add New. Go up to Add Feature or Content Packs. And it's going to bring up this window here. You can do first person, flying, puzzle, rolling, third person, top down, twin stick shooter, handheld AR, which I really want to get into later, uh, side scroller, 2D side scroller, this is more of a 3D environment where this is just kind of flat planes. I actually like the third, you know, the 3D type for a side scroller. Yeah, vehicle, virtual reality, and vehicle advanced. I'm not going to be touching on virtual reality because I don't have a VR headset. So, um, we're about some of these other ones. We're going to start off with what most people will go for first. Well, I want a first person shooter, but I want it multiplayer. Yeah, stick with third person. Trust me. So we're going to add that to our project. As simple as that. And yes, I could have already pre-selected this ahead of time, but I chose not to. I wanted to come in this way. So if I want to also add in first person and flying and rolling and whatever, then I can. But for now, this is what we're going to do. And content packs. I'm going to go ahead and add to project, but I want to select starter content, not mobile starter content. They're pretty much the same, but uh, the starter content is going to add about 700 megabytes to your file size for your folder size of the game. To start off with, these are the only things I'm going to add into the project to get us going with enough stuff to move around, interact with, and do things. This does take a minute to, to load in. And once you see all that, you're good. You can hit the X and close that out. What you're going to get, let's go down the list of what we've got here. Now we have our content folder. We've gotten geometry. This is part of the third person uh, template. It's going to give us um, a couple of cubes, cube material, and template for the floor. That's awesome. It's going to give us a mannequin which is going to have our animation blueprint, our blend space, and our basic animations for walking around and jumping and um, running. Inside of our character folder, we're going to get our materials that we need for our character. Interesting looking material there, but um, material layers. Don't really need to worry about that just yet. Um, our mesh, which is going to be our skeletal mesh, and it's going to have that pink color on the bottom. So if you're looking, you know that little pinkish uh, color right there is going to mean that it's a skeletal mesh. Our physics asset is kind of a tan color. We're not going to mess with that at all. We don't need to. Um, our mannequin, our UE4 mannequin skeleton, is our actual skeleton. And open that up really quickly. It's that light blue color. And what we have is our skeleton, and we have all of our bones. Cool. Nothing we need to do with this, but okay. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to select Edit, 
go to editor preferences I want all of my windows to pop up up here onto the main window so I'm going to go to asset editor open location main window and one thing I want you to get in the habit of is going here to loading and saving disable enable autosave if you are relying on autosave to keep you from screwing something up you're doing it wrong you have the save all button right there um, you have save current you have many different buttons you can press to save things get in the habit of you do something hit save do something hit save your brain and your fingers need to get in tune with saving frequently don't rely on autosave to save your butt because it may not back up enough to get what you need so don't rely on the auto saves all right then you have your textures to go along with your mannequin moving into third person it's going to give you a couple more meshes you're going to get um, these and I'll go to the third person example map which is going to be in the next folder here maps and third person example map so here we've got a character we have um, a basic structure in here now I'm going to point out this if you don't have world settings listed right here I have details and world settings if you don't see that world settings tab go up to window and click just to the left or where it says world outliner click right there I'm sorry world settings right there and make sure that it actually has a check mark by it and you'll see the tab here you definitely want to have your world outliner as well but your world settings is going to come in quite handy because as you can see our game mode override is set to none if I hit play now we are going to have a character because there was a character listed there in, on the screen and we can use our WASD and our mouse to control our character that's awesome hit escape but the first thing I always do is I come in here and I delete him okay well why would you delete it well you have a player start right here see a little player start you click on it and see player start now I come over here to my game mode and select game mode override and I'm gonna go to third person game mode now I'm gonna hit play again and now we spawn there when you're creating a multiplayer game you want to have multiple spawn locations well one of the primary ways you can do that is by adding more and I can control C and control V and paste it in there it's gonna say bad size so just pick it up a little bit and that'll take care of that problem another way is to have player start and just drag one into the map hit play and stop hit play and stop it's gonna pick between them so I can actually take the original one that came with it delete it and delete it delete that and if I hit play there is no player start so it will start from wherever you were but you do want to have a player start in here I'm just saying is if you don't have one in here if I go up here and I'm looking at the map right here and I hit play it's gonna spawn me in where I was so grab player start and just drag it into the map and now when you hit play you'll start at that start point nice and simple okay these were the basic shapes that were included with the third person example map and third person template um, you're gonna see this right here it's a documentation actor we don't need it so I'm gonna select it and hit delete you can see this a sticking up here and if you click on the A you'll see that it says third person you go to your details panel you can actually scroll down and change this from third person to whatever I want it to be and you can place text into your map that way that's one way um, if you want to find that and add it in yourself and you can't figure out where it is oh, it's a lot. is it here or is it here instead of clicking through all these things and these are all good things to have um, you can put it in here and type in text that's gonna be a text render and I'm gonna drag it over and slap it onto the wall and I slapped it onto this wall you notice that it's backwards 
So I'm actually going to put on here, this is my first text render. It's backwards. I don't want it backwards. Go in here and look. We don't want it backwards. So I'm going to remove the text from here so I got everything back. And wow, there's so much stuff in here, it's kind of hard to see what's what. So we can minimize all these different things. Text render actor, right there. So you've got some transform tools. And what transform is you're transforming it, you're you're modifying it. Since this is backwards, let's go ahead and click right here. And this is select and rotate objects. And you're gonna have this blue one is going to let me flip it around this way. We can go 180 degrees. You can change the angles however you want but I want it flat against the wall but what if I want it larger you've got some stuff right here I can manually click in this box here and drag it over or I can select oh, I want it to be 50 so you have control over the, the size of the text there's only really one default um, font in here you can update that later and add that later on but Remember, we need to learn how to crawl before we can walk. Uh, text render color. If you want to change the color, you click right here, and it comes up with a color picker. Kind of like a nose picker. Um, I want one is 100%. So we want 100% red, we want 0% green, and 0% blue. R for red, G for green, B for blue, A is for your alpha, which is going to be your transparency. Now, if you change this from 1 to, say, a 0.5, it's half as dark, and you can see through it. It's going to come in handy later, but something else is going to come in handy. Since we just created a nice red color, I'm going to see, i got a hand icon here. I'm going to left-click and drag it up here, and now I've saved this color. I can come back to it and just click up here anytime I want. You can put a bunch in here, and you can actually add more, add themes, cool stuff, but... For now, keep it simple, stupid, and let's move on. So there, this is my first text render. That's awesome. Hit escape. Now, working with your map can get a little bit time-consuming. A lot time-consuming. Um, but there's some things you need to, to look at. And we're just going to go ahead and save all. Save selected. I'm going to go ahead and create a new map so I can experiment with a few things. And I'm going to go to File in the upper left-hand corner. Before I do that, proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Let's go to our content folder. I'm going to right-click and create new folder. We're going to call this Maps. Okay. I know this is going to be my, where all of my maps get saved to, and that's going to be important later on. So now I can go in here and hit File new level and I am going to select between these three here you have default which we saw earlier which is just a little floating platform in, in open space VR basic even though we're not doing VR we can still use this one and it's gonna be handy this is the one that I use a lot for my test maps and then you have empty level there's nothing there you have to put everything lighting sky and all that stuff But we're gonna select the VR basic and it's gonna create this now, I want to go ahead, and the first thing that I'm going to do is go to my world settings, set my game mode override to third-person game mode, and you see we already have a player start in there. So now when I hit play, I have a mouse cursor, so now I have to left-click in here. But we now have the ability to walk around, and we can bump into these items. They have gravity, physics. You can knock them around, interact with them, and that's cool. I don't want them. So if you look over here in our world outliner, I'm going to left click here on the ball, which is the top one. Well, now I can hold down the shift key and left click on this cube, and it's going to select all of those. Then I'm going to hold down the control key and left click on pyramid. That's going to select my last one. I'm going to hit the delete key, and they're all gone. All right. So the next thing, the next most important thing for getting organized, 
you can create folders in here as well. Now in this current version you can right click here and in any open space there create folder and I'm gonna call this map stuff and hit enter and I'm gonna left click here and shift left click here and I'm gonna drag them by left click drag and drop on that folder and then I can minimize that and now I have clean room up here we're gonna take our player start and I'm gonna go back to this transform which is select and translate this is going to allow me to move it left and right and up and down in the world so now if I hit play we're gonna start back here in the corner now the reason why I did that is now I'm gonna go ahead and hit save all save selected I'm gonna manually select my maps folder I'm gonna call this my test map now our map is saved we can always come back to it at any time so if you look in our starter content we have architecture that's going to give us a floor pillar a round platform some walls a wall with door frame you'll see 500 by 500 400 by 400 400 by 300 400 by 200 but you also notice that the window is only 400 by 400 so if we use these it annoys me because I have a lot of OCDs and I like to stick with 500 by 500 when building my base platforms um, but in here it's 400 by 400 uh, I have to use more complicated math so no problem if I wanted to create uh, we'll say a house I just left click I drag that in here you can see it's below the floor so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the delete key and get rid of that if I click on this go to my details panel it's gonna give me some basic information about it its location is zero 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 and that's good but if I try dragging an item in here it's also gonna put this at wherever I drop it so if I do zero tab zero tab and all I did was click in here because the pivot point for that item is on the top edge it's going to drop it down below the ground so I can move this up right now we're set at 10 it's going to move it up 10 every time we move our our drag here so by doing that we now notice it's 20 so that's going to tell me that's the height of my object here is 20 we want a door so let's drag in our 400 by 400 wall door not Waldorf but okay we'll do 0 0 and 0 you see it's gonna put it since the pivot point is on the floor it's gonna put it there but the pivot points also in the middle here all right well what if we want the door right here so I can grab my rotate and rotate it around 90 degrees now being that the pivot points are in different locations when I go in here am I still gonna be able to go through the door no not really so we've got two options here we can lower the floor or we can raise the um, the actual wall itself so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise that but you can see now it's it's still hanging over the edge I'm not going to change that so now if I come over here I can walk right through the door no problem so I had to raise that floor up that wall up by 20 so let's actually put in a wall window we can go back over here to my location again and zero zero and instead of zero we're gonna make that 20 here 20 so that's gonna put it right there on the same level as the other one do the same thing with a regular wall we could drop it in here and do zero zero and it's already on 20 because I dropped it down right here 
Now let's just drag this wall over here. I'm going to move it to 400 on our positioning so that it lines up correctly. So you, what you can do is use these basic architectural pieces to create your first um, structures with. They're not going to be beautiful, doesn't matter. We just want to get something to get you started with to create the basics. So again here, I selected that door frame. I'm going to hit Control C on the keyboard and Control V and now drag. And what we have created is a basic structure with a door on both sides so that we can actually make this modular um, and you can create this as your your structure itself now we don't have a roof on it so we can take this control C control V and raise it up and you can I'm using my right mouse button to look around and WASD control to go up and down. So, basic structure. Delightful. So we have the ability to, to run around and interact with it that way. Um, if you want to, you can go ahead and... What if you don't like them? Well, you can just select here, shift left click here, and boom gone. Alright, so those are fun to play with for setting up structures, uh, building your first basic houses and so forth, but there's other things that you're going to learn and I'll get into more depth in them in other videos. So let's continue looking through the starter content. You're also going to get audio, which is going to be a WAV file and a sound cue. A sound cue is going to let you do things like combine ten different sounds into one and put a random modifier in and allow you to every time you hit the um, collapse cue or that cue it may play a different sound. It picks one at random out of that. And double click in it, go in, see so you've got a random node and you've got two different sound files sound is something that's, that's important for a map but again we're just going to get overviews on things for right now in this video and go into more depth in other videos so you're going to get some sound files they're going to be for building collapsing explosions the sound of a fire sparks um, a light hum the sound of smoke hissing uh, birds in the background starter music steam you're gonna have some good stuff that you can use for making your map a little bit more livable because when you hit play there's nothing it's silent I hate pure silence in a map there's got to be something um, we'll look at blueprints for adding we'll say the starter music or the starter sound um, background sound. It's going to be a sound of wind and birds chirping and things of that nature. It's going to make the map feel more livable and doing it for the map you can easily just come in here in blueprints, open level blueprint and actually edit the blueprint for the level itself. I don't need my event tick but on begin play, event begin play is going to be whenever you begin playing naturally event tick is going to fire off a check it's going to check every frame rate your frame so if you've got 120 frame rate then it's going to check 120 times you know so it's going to match your frame rate you, if you're doing 60 frames per second it's going to check 60 times a second so you want to try to avoid event ticks whenever possible and use them only if you need to. Use them short term for testing, but always try to eliminate them as possible. This is going to be complicated, so follow along here. From Event Begin Play, I'm going to click on this pin right here. I'm going to drag out on my left mouse button and let go. And what I want to do here is I want to play a sound. So let's type in play. Huh got a bunch of different things that come up under play 
Well, let's narrow it down some more sound. I didn't even put a space in. It automatically does that for me. Play sound 2D. Play sound at location. That's what I want to do is play sound at location. If I don't give it a location, it's going to default to 0, 0, 0 in the center of the map. And what I'm going to do for my sound is... Huh, I want the background. Starter background Q. That's going to combine all of those sounds together at once and put it in there. You have an arrow right here. Click that. You have more options. Sound rotation, I'm not so sure about. But you got a volume multiplier. You can change that. One is 100% and zero is 0%. Zero That's just going to change your volume. Uh, pitch multiplier. Um, it's going to change the pitch of the sound to some higher pitch or lower pitch. Um, that's going to come in handy later on for things like gunshots and footsteps and things of that nature. You also have start time. You want it to start at the very beginning or wherever. Okay, that's cool. Uh, sound attenuation or attenuation settings. We don't have an attenuation set up for this yet and we'll cover that more in, in the sound videos. Concurrency, we don't have to worry about that. Owning actor, don't have to worry about that either. So we can actually for now just skip this, hit compile, save, and close. Now when we hit play, may or may not be able to hear it, but now I have the background sound playing in the background, hence the name background sound. A little bit better, a little bit nicer. So let's move along. We got some blueprints. Um, in these, uh, you've got some effects and other stuff that are built in. So if you wanted to do um, a wall sconce, you can drag it in here, throw it on a wall. This just happens to be the right wall. So it just snaps right to the wall. Now if I go in here and hit play, there we go. You can see we have a nice little wall sconce. So you have some ready-made lights built into, and I'm going to get rid of it for now, built into the starter content. You've also got a ceiling light that you can put in. Um, I don't have a ceiling, so it won't really do for me. But when you put it in there, you can raise it up to where the platform hits the ceiling. And when you hit play, you got a nice little light you can have sitting over a table. But I don't have a table. Well, yes, you do. So let's skip down here. HDRI, you don't have to mess with. Maps, eh, you can check them out later if you like. Um, I don't mess with them. Materials. This is going to be a fun thing here. You have a bunch of pre-made materials you can work with, like chrome and gold and grass and wood flooring and, uh, yeah, all kind of cool different uh, materials for your floor that you can use right off the bat. We'll revisit that later. Um, particles. Love it. I love particle effects. They will make or break a map, too fire um, explosion ambient dust kind of a cool effect you may not even notice it but occasionally you'll see a little speckle of dust pop around the trouble with it is it's a small particle effect and it's fixed so if you want to span your entire map yeah, good luck with that. Um, the way that I do it is I apply it actually to the character in the character blueprint. Some sparks. My chair is trying to kill me. Cool sparking effect. And steam. So you have a nice little smoke effect. Or darker smoke, like for a fire. There we go love particle effects props you get a sphere a bush you drag the bush in there and there you go you got a bush isn't it pretty um, a chair a couch and later on we'll show you how to set these up to where you can actually sit down in them For right now, um, there's not even any collision on, on that one, for some reason. But, yeah, 
so you can get some basic furniture to get started with. Again, I'll show you later on how to actually make it to where you can sit down in them. The actual lamp itself, so if you want one in your map that's not on, you can put that in. Uh, some pillars, a rock, a shelf. It's because you have one rock. doesn't mean you're stuck with that rock. There's things you can do with a rock. You can control C, control V, so I can make a copy of it. I can take it so it doesn't look the same. I can actually rotate it. Different directions. Position it in different ways. And you can make one rock look like a bunch of different types of rocks just by changing the rotation and and so forth. Don't know why there's no collision on these guys. It's interesting. So, yeah, you got a few props to work with. You have a piece of glass you can use for your window. And you also have a door and door frame. And also no collision. Really interesting. So the door and door frame, you can combine those with the architecture pieces you have from earlier. You also get some shapes that you can work with if you're just in the mood for setting up pipes and you want some pipes in different directions and so forth. Um, yeah, you got those. You got um, different shapes you can work with. You can get creative with them because once you're there, you can also use this, which is to scale. You can make it larger, make it wider that way, make it wider this way. You can do things with it. But those aren't the only shapes you got to work with. And then you got your textures that are associated with your materials. And that's cool. So we got plenty of good starter content. We have some basic map stuff to work with. Um, there's another way you can create shapes, and this is going to be a lot more useful later down the line. And you also have basic. You have cube here, sphere, cylinder, cone, plane. A plane is just a flat piece that usually has one side here, but mm, you can see through the other side. Sometimes useful. Um, I use them pretty often for water. So if I drag in here a plane, raise it up just a little bit, and then scale it. Come over here, you have your materials. Now, you can go back to your starter content folder, materials folder, and you have two different waters here, ocean and lake. I'm going to select it by left clicking one time and then clicking right here and it's going to apply that to the water, or the, uh, the plane, and make it look like water. Of course we can step on it because it's a flat plane, but it has a nice water appearance to it. But what if you want to use the, the lake? Just that easy, you can switch between materials that are on something like that. Awesome, right? There's other shapes too, and these are ones that I use really frequently for designing stuff for, for maps. Geometry. You have a box. You have a cone, cylinder, curved stairs, linear stairs. Uh, put stairs in here, put spiral. You can drag these in here. And when you drag them in here, they're not going to have any materials on them whatsoever. But what if you want materials? Well, uh, the easy way to do it is select what material you want ahead of time. Because if you're trying to select it, and you'll see the problem later on. But let's go to the linear stairs. Let's go to our starter content, our materials. And I want mine to be made out of walnut wood flooring. Now I drag it in here and when I let go it's 
put that material on all the way. But, dude, they're facing the wrong direction. They're okay this way, but, oh man, it's backwards. Looks good everywhere else, but you look at the top of the, the uh, steps, and they're facing the wrong direction. Left click on the face, and right here, it's a 90, and it will rotate it. You can control left click on multiples and do the same thing or just do one at a time so again click control left click and hit 90 now the boards are facing the correct direction so I look at my stairs hey you have other transforms for those as well. A common mistake that I see people doing is when they're putting in a box geometry, I'm going to use, well, use a new brick. Uh, drag this in here. And, well, you know you got these transform tools over here. If you click right here, and start dragging it out to make it longer this way. Look what happened to the material. Looks normal here, but it's stretched and skewed out. But how do you avoid that from happening? You go in there and edit this and that and everything else? No. Instead of using this transform tool, I use Control Z to undo what I just did. Instead of using that, we have our brush settings for this and you look at your X, Y, and Z coordinates right here and let's say 500 hit tab, 500 hit tab, and, and 500. Now it's sticking in the ground a little bit so if I know that Z, this is my height, if you're unsure which way the Y is or the X is, right here in this corner you can see Y is going this direction X is going this direction. Z is going up and down. So, if you want it to sit flush with the ground, half of your Z height will be what your Z height is for your location. So if I put 250 in there, that's now going to put it directly on the ground. You said you could use this for buildings. How are you going to use that for a building? There's no doors. There's no way to get into it. It's a freaking big, huge, solid cube. Well, I'm going to click on my box brush, and you got a couple different things you can do. Brush setting, we're going to come back to that. Brush shape, we're going to look at that later. We want to make this hollow by checking this box. The wall thickness is 10. That's good enough, and that's awesome. Now, if we look at it, we fly into it, we have an interior, which is also awesome, but there's no door. How are we going to get into it? Well, I'm going to make sure I have my brick selected. I'm going to grab another box collision, drop it here on the map, and it's set at 200 on Z height. Heck of it, let's put it at 300. We know that this is 10, so our floor is going to be 10 high, and half of our Z is 150, so we're going to make this 160. Again, that doesn't look like much of a door. Our thickness of our wall is 10, so our X, you can still see right here, X now is going this way. We want to make our X to be 20, so it's more than enough. And 200 is fine on the width. But it's not a, a, a way to get in. Well, you click on brush type additive, select this, change it to subtractive, you see it's invisible here. Now as you move it towards your wall, you've just created an opening in your wall. Now you have a doorway. This is awesome. This is going to allow you to experiment with that in so many different ways. But just like you did the other shape, again we're just going to basically touch on this. You can Go to Geometry Editing up here, 
Now I can grab this corner and raise it up. What if I want to do this corner and control left click on this corner? Now I've got both of them selected. I can pull that down. I can then left click on this one, pull it down, and let's push it this way. Sometimes it will lose its material, but that's not a big, huge issue. Um, what about if we grab this one and this one and move it this way? Go back to our placement mode, hit play. Now we've just used that box and made it into a funky thing. If you want to add the material to it, I'm going to select this and then geometry select select all adjacent surfaces and I'm gonna make it to rock slate then hit here and here now we just change the material over to where it's a type of rock so you get really in depth with a lot of stuff with the um, the basic geometries. My favorite thing to do with the BSP geometries is um, let's grab let's grab, let's grab Chrome for our color. Geometries, linear stairs. Now, if I want to change my stairs, you can change the number of stairs. Let's make this twenty, and that's cool. We got that. We can change our width if we want to. Step width is 300. Made it wider. The step height uh, you can change. Um, that's cool. But another cool thing we can do by doing the same basic uh, things with a geometry uh, and editing of things is I can Control C, Control V, and make a copy of it and paste a new one in. And now move it over to where you can see where I'm lining it up here. And then change it from additive to subtractive. And then remove one stair. And that's 19. Now, if you look at it, we have a set of floating stairs that we can walk underneath. What if you want to use multiples of that? And get rid of our building all right so you got these two right here and this is what we're going to finish out the video on because we're going a little long on just covering some of the sheer basics what i'll do in the next video is start picking up on these basics and start applying them towards something that's a bit more usable but again if we want to use these stairs in multiple different locations you would either click here shift click here so you have both of them control C control V and now you've got two actors for the same thing that's fine but we don't want that we want to combine these two into a single actor we can do that by selecting both of them and scroll down oh, gee I don't see it brush settings click on that little arrow you get another one and it's called create static mesh before we do that proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance let's create a new folder this new folder is going to be called gadgets call it whatever you want and I'm going to make a new folder called mesh now I'm going to select create static mesh go to my gadget folder mesh and I'm gonna call this my chrome underscore because we don't like spaces stairs create static mesh and now we have it and it combined it into it right there um, however now the problem we're gonna run into is uh oh we lost our collision we can't walk up and down our stairs so let's double click on our chrome stairs it's going to bring us to there this now the appropriate thing to do is to create your own custom collision for it because i'm going to select collision and simple 
there isn't one. But if I show complex collision, there is a collision there. The best way to do this is to create a, um, a custom box collision and you can accomplish that and you, you should probably do that whatever you're creating it this way. You can actually create um, a collision, a box collision and actually add it onto there. But we're going to do it a different way this time. This is not the best way of doing it. I'm going to scroll down. Well, first off, there's a couple things we need to look at. Our light map coordinate index is set to zero. Show you why this is important here in just a moment. We're going to come back to it, but I'll show you why this is um, important. Light map resolution and light map coordinate index. But we're going to come down here to our collision complexity and select this drop down box. Use complex collision as simple. We're going to hit save and come back in here and now we should have collision on our stairs. Again, this is not the best way to do it, but it's going to get you there to test out things. A common thing you're going to be doing a lot of is clicking here, build lighting only. You're going to do lighting builds or you can just hit build and it's going to go through and do your navigation build, your lighting builds and all that stuff. What can happen when you do this is oftentimes you're going to have your material screwed up on here. And if it comes out black, uh, you're going to have to come back in here to your, your settings and change your light map coordinate index from 0 to 1. Light map resolution at least to 64. So when you do your build or your lighting build, it's going to, there is no lighting change. For some reason, it's not doing a lighting build, but there we go. So now, anytime you want those stairs, you can now drag that static mesh in here and drop them wherever you want. Pure awesomeness. All right, so these are just some of the, the sheer basics. We'll cover more of them and more of each part in different videos. But I wanted you to get this project started. And essentially all we have is third-person template and starter content. That's all we have in here. And we haven't done anything complex, anything out of the ordinary. We're just kind of getting set up for building something out of this. So take your time, go back through if you want, but the biggest factor of this is be ready to come in and be open-minded. I don't care if you've been using Unreal Engine 4 for a year. If you're having problems, it's because you're having problems. Come back, refocus on the basics, and get a new look on, on the way you're doing things. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Plan ahead before you do anything. Create test projects so that you can test out individual functions, features, content before you try to integrate that into your, your main project. Forget about your main project. Forget about making the next Battle Royale game ugh, or the next whatever game. Forget about whatever game you want to create and create crap. Create a project, make your character walk up and down stairs, make your 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 first basic map or your first basic whatever. Build little simple projects first and then add features, add functions, add things a little bit at a time. And you'll be amazed that once you get your head clear and you start doing things in an organized way and learning how to analyze the problems and solving your problems as you're going along you'll be amazed how much better you're going to be just by returning to the basics have some fun with it create little dumb projects create a, sing a single player game 
do whatever. Uh, don't overcomplicate things, but just add one feature, one function at a time. Don't lose focus, but do one thing, get it right, and then move on to the next feature. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you soon.